Welcome to the Lighthouse Financial Advisors Money Over 50 podcast with Dallas Davison and Michael Hoag. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Lighthouse Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hoag. Hybrid vigor. <laughs> Why it's important for your retirement savings as well as your cattle herd. Welcome to Money Over 50. Thanks, Michael. Dallas. Um, you're, a bit, you're a bit thrown by this, aren't you? you? You don't actually really know what hybrid vigor is, do you? Is it hybrid... Uh, uh, is, is, is hybrid vigor joined with a... Um... <laughs> I, I started to explain this just before we, is it one we, word? Is before it we started is it recording and then word? I went, I'll, I'll save the explanation for the actual podcast. So the concept here is as it relates to genetics and breeding. So this is from my, my background, my previous life, my current life as a, as a primary producer. So there's a theory with when you're breeding cattle that, uh, especially in northwest Queensland, where I'm from, you want a base of your herd to be um, normally Brahmin, so a hardier breed that's able to withstand drought and can you know, um, do with poor nutrition for an extended period of time. All these sorts of really good traits of this type of breed. So you want your base of your herd to be that uh, that certain breed, a full full bred Brahmin cattle. And then what you actually want is you want a purebred bull of another softer British breed uh, to go over those cows. So normally in, in our case, it would be a Charolais bull in that, in that mm. example. So, but what you find is that there's a theory here where if you've got a purebred Brahmin cow and a purebred Charolais bull, the progeny of that, of that first cross will actually be better than, than either of its parents, if that makes sense. Mm. So there's... There's actually something to be gained by having um, your cow be fully one breed and your bull be fully the other, rather than the alternative, which would be to have the cow be half Brahmin, half Charolais, and the bull be half Brahmin, half Charolais. Yep. So the, the theory, I was thinking about this the other day, and yeah, obviously, this, as we do on the show, I had a thought and I thought we can draw a long bow here and bring this back to your retirement savings. But my theory with this is this is how I think about how people should have their retirement savings invested. You've, mm. you've either got your money that you want for the long term, and mm. and in that money should be invested in the highest returning, most volatile uh, asset classes you can be invested into, or you've got your money that you need in the short term. And that money that you need in the short term, it should be in the safest, uh, most stable, no volatility and asset classes and you just don't care what return you get on that you're not looking for any sort of return at all mm. and that was i guess my theory on this is that which is a bit different to historically how financial planning or how how a lot of other financial planners think about these things look simple rules for me work um and look, the benefit to that is that if you had um you know five hundred thousand dollars just yep. pick an arbitrary figure yep. of, of retirement savings and you had yeah, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars working hard for you, yep. um, albeit at some volatility, of course. Yep. But really pulling its weight with the objective of the the maximum return, yep. you know, possible for for that, yeah, uh, for that level of diversification. Um, yep. And then you had another fifty thousand dollars of yep. money that was just sitting aside in your bank account. In, in in your bank account, and that's your fallback money. Yep. It's really easy to see. Um, and, and I like the one of the reasons why I have uh, about fifteen different bank accounts yeah. is that one bank account's a holidays bank yeah. account, one's a bills paying account, one's yeah. Um, so it's really easy to see the balances of those accounts. Um, now, now the same thing applies, I believe, with your retirement savings. Yeah. You want to actually quickly look at that and say, okay, okay, What's all that? of this money is over here is pulling its weight. Yeah. This money here is my fallback money. Yeah. Um, the way that the industry has traditionally done this is, is to, to um, package that all up into what they call a balanced fund, yeah. uh, or even worse, a, a target dated fund. And we won't get into too much no, uh, information I won't, you, here. I won't let you get on your, your soapbox about this. So those funds have yeah, traditionally packaged up together. So the, the yep. lazy money or yep. the cash money that you have yep. there, 
Um, the fallback money, let's call it yeah, the fallback yeah, money. Yeah. yeah, so if you... If you yeah, yeah. The emergency money, basically. The emergency the money. Term, yeah. It's all packaged in together with the with the money that's working for you, and you're never quite sure... what Which is which. Which is which, and, and there's actually been, um, I guess, a, a, another topic for discussion here. The, the, in the last couple of years, um, there's been a lot of industry funds actually calling... Uh, their funds a balanced fund, yeah. which would which would traditionally mean yeah. sort of equal mixes of, of Australian companies and global companies and cash and fixed interests and things like that. They've been calling them balanced funds, but they've really been like growth funds. Weighted so they, they've been yeah. weighted differently. Yeah. So and, and that's, you're never really sure how much money that you have yeah. in there. That, that's why, I guess, I guess the, the hybrid vigor thing, um, what that really came to me is that it's very simple. If you've got, you, if you've got your herd of cattle, you know what the purpose of, of each of those cattle is for, if that makes sense. So yeah. if you've got your you've got a Brahman cow, a good breeder cow there, her job is to be tough, hardy, have a calf every year, raise that calf, yeah. do that. You, you're not looking to her for massive weight gain and to be a, mm. you know, a, a great carcass and, and you know all those mm. sorts of things. So it's the same sort of thing with as you're talking about with your retirement saving. If you've got a fund and you go, oh yeah, my my superannuation is with Sun Super. It's in the balance fund. Well, is that meant to be working extremely hard for you over the long term? Is it meant to be there for you to get your hands on in the short term? Is it you know any of those sort yeah. of things? You don't know what what it's for, and then because you don't know what it's for, you really can't tell what you should be benchmarking it against. Is it doing a good job or is it not doing a good job? But the the other thing that stands out for us, and we've spoken about this at length, is the fallback money is there <coughs> for for one of two reasons. One is that expenses have come up that yeah. you haven't budgeted for, so you got a bit of fallback money that you yeah. can actually yeah. meet oh. those things uh, yeah. from. Or number two, negative market volatility. Yeah. So so you know if the if the value of your growth assets, which will happen from time to time, will drop by 30 percent, yeah, temporarily, um, the fallback money is there to for you to actually divert. To and yep. say, okay, and leave well, I'm going to leave money. my yep. growth money alone. Yeah, that's going to go up and down in the short term, and it's down right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to draw my income. Yep. I'm going to harness in on this fallback money. I'm just yep. going to draw my income needs from there. Yep. Uh, and to- I'll top that back up later on. Yeah. So, so you can't do that when it's all packaged together. No. Because, no. and 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 I've always found it, um, uh, I guess, frustrating where where they've said, okay, well, a balanced fund is suitable for this type of person and a high growth fund is suitable for this type of person. And when it's all packaged together, if you can just imagine for a second, yeah. um, the true balanced fund uh, in simple terms has about two thirds of its money yeah. in high growth things yeah. that high go up and down, yeah. high volatility, um, and one third of it yeah. in, in very stable lazy fallback yeah. money yeah. that doesn't grow at a fast rate but it doesn't fall either yeah. so look if you get growth markets falling 30 yeah. percent what happens to a balance fund yeah it's is that the combined value of that drops by 20 percent so the yeah. the the two-thirds yeah. that's weighted towards that high growth yeah um that falls by the 30 percent yeah uh one yeah. third of it doesn't fall at all yeah so the blended return of that is still fallen by by 20 percent yeah now, um, that still makes people feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it certainly makes people that, yeah. that haven't actually looked at what they're invested into feel yeah. really uncomfortable. That's right. And it's and it's always it's always struck me as just another one of the things that's so confusing in this industry because yeah. seemingly on the surface, well, that, that's, um, a balanced fund. Yeah, people hear that and, and go, they think it's safe. It's safe. It's yeah. not going to fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas you are better, and, and this is a big thing we talk about. Um, it's about being being honest and upfront about what is what is going to happen with this money. So if you, hmm. again, in those simple terms, if you've got your money, if you decide that your money in superannuation, you're not going to retire for ten years, and then when you retire, you're going to need to draw an income out of that money for another thirty years. Really, the goal of that superannuation or the purpose of it is to try and grow as much as possible over the next ten to forty years. So you're not you. You're kidding yourself if you go, oh, well, I want to invest that money in a way that's going to grow over 30 years, but also I don't want it to drop ever at all. It, it just doesn't work like that. You can't have it both ways. No. And I think that, again, like we see with a lot of these things with it, with our money, because it's not a tangible, concrete thing, 
it's not as clear cut as that. And and that's I guess the the point that I make of why this analogy of, of the of the cattle or anything like that springs to mind is that you go everything exists for a purpose. Everything should exist for a purpose within within any way that you structure anything in your life. You know you you don't you don't have um, you know, I, I like the analogy you've used of with your money, thinking of it from the anal- from from the point of, is it the hard working yeah. money or is it the the lazy money that, you know, or is it the is it the comfort money? Is it the the money like you know that's going to give you a nice hug and make you feel better at night, or is it the hard charging, you know, consultant, high consultant, consultant, yeah, exactly right, that, who, um, who's going to that while they're working and come in and swing an axe and you know get things. Seven hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. But then there's months and months of time where they yeah. where they're out of work, and yeah. they yeah. You know, that's that's the analogy that I use. Yeah. Like while they are working, they're they're yeah. earning a lot of money. Yeah. There's there's months at a time when they're not working at yeah. all. Yeah. But if you add up the um, if you add up all of the uh, seven hundred dollar an hour work yeah. and subtract all the work where they yeah. they're not working. Yeah. And look at that over a ten year period, their average earnings is more than the average person. Yeah. And that that's what a growth investment is yeah um uh versus versus um grandma yeah who's who's uh, yeah 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 you know, she's she's she makes you feel yeah. uh you go there she bakes scones yeah um yeah yeah, yeah takes she, care of she, you she, she, is very caring and warm and nice yeah. but she's not going to come in and and you know uh make stuff happen in a, in a very abrupt yeah, she's not going to earn way. a lot of money yeah um, so 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 um and it. both of those, both of those, yeah. both required. of those people are important. Yes. And both of those groups of money are important. And for me, it's important to have them separated. Or for you, exactly. for us, it's yes. important to have them separated. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's, I think, the the, the point that that I, that I make there about the concept of the hybrid figure is is not just that you need some money in this and you need some money. It's like like with a cattle herd, you actually the sum of those parts is. Is more than than each of the, the yeah. than each of the parts. If that makes yeah. sense. So, if as you said in that example before, if you've got money that you've got for the long term, and mm. and it's invested and it's growing as much as possible, it's working as hard as possible. You need that money. You need that fallback money. You need that stuff for the short term, so that you then don't have to worry and you can let that long term money yeah. do its thing. You can't have it both. You can't go. Well, I want all of my money to work as hard as possible, but also I want it in case of an emergency as well. You no. need to be very clear around what is the point of, of each of these different buckets of money and then make a decision based on what asset class it should be invested into, based on what the purpose of it really is. Yeah, yeah look, it's um, probably a good place to wrap up. I feel oh. like anyone anyone who's actually listened to this podcast who does know what hybrid vigor is is probably going to abuse me you go, that's not what hybrid vigor is you I, I was just thinking um that hybrid vigor we always talk about a good resource name that's, right. a, that's a classy resource name. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can see hybrid vigor in the victorian derby <laughs> or the uh or the melbourne cup yeah. even because it's, it's it's actually a really classy yeah resource name so. yeah now I, I think that if you if you you don't have any experience with uh, cattle breeding, which most people in the population don't. It, it probably doesn't mean much to you, but I guess the the concept is we all know that the you know sometimes the the children of something are, are better than either of the parents in in that yeah. area, if that makes sense. And yeah. I think that's how we need to think about our retirement savings. Is I'm sure people will be interested. I mean, it's part of me listening to podcasts is where you, you think you're listening about one thing and then yeah. you hear <laughs> other things and you learn something new, yeah. intertwined into that. Yep. Yeah. So I, I never knew yeah. what the hell you were talking about until you, <laughs> until you actually until you actually started talking about it. But yeah. it, but it's um no it's it's good. I know more now yeah. about um, cattle breeding. So. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over Fifty podcast with Lighthouse Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.